A lot of Africans within the diaspora are migrating to Africa around this time. People are doing big businesses, living comfortably out here. In this video, we're going to get to speak to Joshua, a very young man who used to live in America, but has moved to Ghana now. He's running several businesses out here basically living his dream let's get to know him a little bit find out about his business the things that he's done to make sure the transition was as smooth as possible and he's going to tell us a little bit more about our business as well and the challenges he's faced and how he's counteracted them no there's stress mm -hmm. but it's not a lot of stress compared to america stress yeah it's like i'm on a vacation every day mm. right now in ghana yeah difficult thing that you deal with when you have a bar Right now, everything is in Ghana. Yeah. Everything you're looking for, it's in Ghana. Yeah. So there must be a secret here in yeah, this country absolutely. where you can make a lot of money to yeah. be able to take your kid and yeah. pay dollars. As you guys know, I'm bringing a lot of content, sharing stories about people who have moved from the diaspora to Ghana. Today, I've got Joshua here. Joshua moved about a year and a bit ago. Um, he lives in Ghana now. He set up this establishment. He's got a restaurant. He's got a saloon. He's got a barber shop. There's all these bits to it. Let's get to know him a little bit find out about his story and how he ended up here i hope you guys learn a thing or two from this video give me a thumbs up let's get right into it all right hi joshua hi, hi thanks Desmond. for being on my channel all right i'm glad to be here okay so how did you end up in ghana uh i was born and raised in ghana okay i uh, lived most of my adults and age in ghana okay so i moved to the united states for school college right i uh, went to oklahoma city oh okay university of oklahoma that's a very white city. Isn't very, it? very, very, very white city. Uh, yeah. Very, <laughs> very, very white city. Why Oklahoma though? Uh, it, had, it had some pretty cheap schools at that time. Oh, okay. You know, okay. was uh, trying to stay in my dad's budget. Right. So, okay. uh, and you know, it's 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 a white state but okay. also it's very uh, crime rate is very low okay. and it's also cheap as well right okay. so you, you you're guaranteed to make it out there right way more than new york and oh, the other right. big cities okay, okay so that's why oklahoma and it, mm -hmm. it, was, it was pretty good and you yeah. know uh, uh rent is really cheap out there mm -hmm. it's a whole lot of stuff that is really cheap out yeah. there so it, it, it helped out for a student like myself, mm -hmm. fresh in the United States. It was really good for, okay. for me. So that's yeah. why Oklahoma. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah mostly. So was that your first time away from your parents? Or? Uh, not really. I've, uh, I've always been away from my parents. I think I went to the boarding school like oh, okay. when I was eight years old. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. so I was, uh, not, not that I was stubborn or anything. It's just, <laughs> it's just more it like, that way. more like my dad was, uh, uh, into mining he was mine oh. he was he worked in a mining field right. way out you know mm -hmm. and he needed to give me a good education so mm -hmm. i had to come to the city of accra mm -hmm. so i went to reverend john Tay memorial right at okay. a very young age at eight and have been pretty much on my own okay since so it was very easy for me moving out there okay. and being by myself yeah so once you ended up in america yeah. how long were you there for so uh, i i was in america for a total of 13 years Okay. 13, 14 years. Right. Uh, after school, I, I tried to find a job. I did all kinds of jobs, custodial work, mm. and gradually went up all the way. I did MIS, Manager Information System, is right, what I graduated okay. with. So I tried to use that to work, but it uh, really wasn't what, my, what I really yeah, wanted. Okay. You know, most of us go to college and never end up using it. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. did a few jobs here and there. I managed the hospitals. I was an environmental service manager mm -hmm. at some hospitals, some schools. I managed environmental service manager at school, colleges. So went through it, went through it all, and finally started a trucking business, consulting as well. Right. So I opened up a couple of about two, three trucking businesses mm -hmm. and started doing pretty well. But the year 2020, uh, when everything shut down, mm. trucking was where it was at. Mm. We're the only people moving right. because everything was shut down in yeah. America and uh, truckers were the only people moving stuff around. So mm. I got a contract with Amazon oh, cool. and uh, we were delivering all kinds of goods for Amazon. Yeah. So I started out with a few trucks, mm -hmm. about one, mm -hmm. then went up to five and ended up at 18. Okay. So yeah, it was pretty, pretty good and it pretty turned out well. Mm -hmm. But while I was there, you know, you, it's nothing more like home. Yeah, So I, I thought about doing something back home mm. because there are a lot of opportunities back home. Absolutely. This is how I looked at it. My dad paid all my tuition while I was in school. Mm -hmm. And he paid my tuition from monies he was he making in here Ghana. in Ghana. Yeah, yeah. 
So there must be a secret here in yeah, this country absolutely. where you can make a lot of money to yeah. be able to take your kid and yeah. pay dollars. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, let me try out this mm -hmm. a whole gig of coming to Ghana and start starting up something. So yeah. I did a few research. Back in 2015, I started a cleaning services here in Ghana. In Ghana. Okay. So that was my first business. And you I, were still over there at the time? I was still over there at okay. that time. So I, I'll come down for some vacation, two weeks, three weeks, mm -hmm. set it up gave it to my cousin to take care of it okay. you know a little ups and downs you know it was it was like my first baby yeah trying to uh, understand the mistakes mm -hmm. that uh, I, I would do or things that would happen right. so that I can learn from them mm -hmm. because I had also opened a cleaning business in the US with a friend of mine right okay. so I was using the blueprint from America mm -hmm. to manage the one here in Ghana but right. it's two total different things yeah, it's not uh, the same as exactly yeah. so it was very very difficult trust is the key thing in business in Ghana right so I learned a lot from opening that first business yeah. it was it was the most crazy experience ever mm. but you know that's uh, right now the cleaning service business is doing very well here oh, so it's still running it's still running okay so how long has that been running for uh, since 2015 so eight that's years eight years that's eight a years. long time yes yeah. eight okay. years and then i added uh, so when i came finally decided to settle here i decided to venture into other businesses right so right. that's where i got the hair salon the uh, barber shop right and then the bar and restaurant mm -hmm. uh, we still have we have some delivery services as well okay uh, we do some small scale mining, uh, okay. gold mining as well oh, cool. with my dad, you know, okay. so a bit of everything, really. a, bit, a bit of everything. Okay. You can't have one source of uh, income here yeah, in Ghana. Absolutely. You have to have multiple, multiple sources of income that's and that's that's the secret way to making it here in Ghana. Right. Yeah. So with the cleaning business, you know how you said like there was ups and downs and then, you know, finally it's doing really well. Doing well. Yes. So what was the switch? What changed in order for it to do well? And can you talk me through some of the ups and downs, um, just in case somebody wants to do the same? Right, yeah. right. So opening a business in Ghana, it's not hard, mm -hmm. but the, the, the way it's set up makes it look very difficult. Right. And like I was saying, trust is the key thing mm -hmm. in opening a business in yeah. Ghana. And if you're not hands-on, there'll be a lot of loopholes for people to right. steal. Yeah, okay. For a lot yeah. of people to steal. Yeah. So in 2015, opening a clean service in Ghana, Ghana had not accepted the whole hiring a clean company to clean their buildings. Right. They, they were all in-house. Mm. You know, people would pass comments like, why would I pay somebody to clean my house yeah, when yeah, yeah. I could just do it by myself? Yeah. So it, it wasn't really accepted yet. Mm. I did a little survey, had some guys go out with the survey sheets, asking people if they would want to hire a cleaning service mm -hmm. or clean on their own. Mm -hmm. And majority, I'll say about 60% of them said they'll clean on their own. Okay. So at yeah. that time it wasn't really accepted. So mm -hmm. that was one of the ups, uh, the downside of mm -hmm. it. Also finding workers that are dedicated and want to do the work. It's also another struggles mm -hmm. that we yeah. dealt with. Pricing of the cleaning services because you're going in with a lot of uh, equipment, you're going with uh, a lot of chemicals and yeah. all this stuff, and you have to charge a certain amount yeah, of money. Yeah. But if you charge too much, they're not gonna pay because yeah. first of all, they don't even accept it. Yes. So that was also another downside mm. of it. And then also all the equipment I brought down here, when they break down, it was hard to find someone to fix them. Fix it, yeah. So those were the challenges mm. that we're facing. Mm. But here we are in 2023, mm -hmm. cleaning services are accepted worldwide now. Here yeah. Ghana is accepted cleaning services. Mm. It's funny, some homes that we used to go to and for a cleaning contract mm -hmm. that were like, no, nah, we just hire somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they're calling us and so want the cleaning services. Oh, cool. So those are some of the struggles that right. we had from 2015. Until now. until now. So you would say it was mostly the change in mindsets of the people in Ghana yes. being more accepting of the kind of service yes. you're offering. Yes. That's what yes. made most of the difference. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. And cool. then also making sure that I have certain structures in place mm -hmm. where everything is transparent. Okay. Where everything is transparent and then we have an idea of how we're going to charge mm. per each cleaning uh, contract that we do right how we're going to charge the amount of workers that i need mm -hmm. because you know you, if you're moving into ghana and you don't know and you want to start a business mm -hmm. you don't know the minimum wage mm -hmm. you're going to struggle right because you what have is to know the minimum wage so the minimum wage two months ago mm -hmm. just went up to about 16 cities a day okay so 16 Ghana cities a day, a day yeah. and I think that brings you to about 400, and 400 Ghana cities, 450 Ghana and cities a month. a month. Okay. Yeah, so for five working days, right. that's what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. And so it was back in 2015, it was 10 Ghana cities a right, day. Right, a day, okay. So that's, that's, that's less it's than a dollar yeah, yeah, a day. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's increased a bit, but mm -hmm. you have to have the idea mm -hmm. 
mm. of what you're getting yourself into. Right. You have to know, okay, you need you need certain licenses. Mm. How you know you need to register the business. Right. There's a lot of businesses here in Ghana that are not registered. Registered, yeah. That's but true. if you want to do it the right way yeah. and be recognized, yeah. you need to make sure you've registered your business. Yeah. Yeah. You need to make sure that uh, you have all your licenses that you need from yeah. the EPA, yeah. from SNIT, mm -hmm. from uh, uh, BOP. Right. There's so many, so many of them, and that's what I mainly do for a lot of people. I, I consult for a lot oh, of okay. diasporas outside. Yeah, okay. I do a lot of business consults. Right. So people call me or email me, and then I right. set up an appointment and I teach them all this, dive deep into it. Because okay. there's so, so many things that go in the background mm. that you don't see. Right. So the cleaning services helped me out a lot. It was my first trial. Okay. And then I saw the mistakes that I did. Mm -hmm. And then that's when opening the salon and barbershop, I was hands down with everything. Okay. I went with them to purchase all the stuff in the, in the barbershop. I was mm -hmm. right there when we purchased all the stuff with the sal salon. Did you get all that hair? Or did all you... that hair. Oh, okay. All that hair. Okay. The cleaning services side was, I had to ship some style, right. stuff down here. Yeah. It was a little pricey because mm -hmm. of the whole duty, like paying of the duty fees and yeah, sure. all that kind of stuff. But uh, aside that, everything else was smooth. Okay. The journey itself was rough, mm. but the beginning was smooth. Okay. It's one thing opening the business, mm -hmm. and it's another thing running, running the business. Running it, absolutely. Business. Yeah. Those are some of the challenges okay. that we face. Here. So what made you choose this type of business? What made you choose to run a restaurant, a saloon, a barber shop, all in sort of one space? Why, why that model? It's a very good question, actually. Before I moved, before I did the 2015 survey, mm -hmm. back in 2018, mm -hmm. I did another survey. Right. And wanted to know what business, what niche, should I get into? What kind of business ventures or department should I get into? Yeah. Uh, I first off looked into mining, mm -hmm. but there was so much that you had to do with mining. Right. It was so difficult to mm. get into the mining because you have to get with licenses from the Minerals Commission and oh. that could take months right. for you to get it. Right. So I was trying to find the most easiest business I can open mm -hmm. that would also fetch some type of income, income coming yeah. in because mm -hmm. this is like a mainstream income mm -hmm. where you get money every day because mm -hmm. every day you make sales mm -hmm. every day you make sales mm -hmm. and cash flow is where it's at mm -hmm. if you want to open a business mm -hmm. mainly doing my research in 2018 I, I thought of pharmacy I thought about dialysis uh, uh, machines okay. because uh, my uncle uh, back in 2018 died from a oh, kidney kidney failure, kidney failure. Okay. so it really hit me hard mm. so I thought about that you know because dialysis was so expensive he couldn't yeah. afford it at that time yeah. so I thought about several things but i wanted something that would not strain put mm. a lot of strain on me mm -hmm. that would make it so easy mm. so i looked at it her salon was one of the easiest ones mm. to do mm. you don't need a lot of licenses mm. you don't need you just need few stuff here and there you need to find a good place mm. you need to purchase a few things yeah and it's not more on a salary base as well mm. it's more work and pay oh okay as well so, it so you're not on how much work is coming it, in that's it okay so it's yeah. not you coughing up salaries mm. for the first two three months four yeah. months you know so it was more simple mm. that way mm. and the barbershop is the same yeah the bar and restaurant i realized that anytime i was in ghana we go through a lot of stress in america yeah so oh, when yeah. we come home we mm. want to party of course, and we yeah. want to have fun it's yeah. more like a vacation mm -hmm. for us so whenever i'm in ghana i realized that i was spending a lot of money mm when it came to partying and oh, okay. restaurants yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was like, uh, why am I taking all this money out mm. when I can open something for myself? Right. And right. if I come to Ghana, mm -hmm. I just have fun here yeah. and I eat here mm -hmm. so I don't take the money somewhere else. Right. Okay. So that's where the birth of the bar and restaurant came from. Right. And okay. it just took me an amount of money that I spent one night mm -hmm. at a bar. Mm -hmm. It took me that same amount mm -hmm. to open a bar here. Uh, that, that, yeah. How much was that? <laughs> That was, that was a bill. I, that, was a, okay. <laughs> that was a huge bill. You must have been spending a lot of money. <laughs> I was. Then. I okay. was. Coming out from the whole COVID lockdown mm. and stress and just working, working, yeah. working, not having a life. Yeah. So when the borders were open again and I came to Ghana, mm. I lost my mind. Right. I just went all out and yeah, I was just okay. having fun. Yeah. So it took a minute, sat down and I was like, okay. All this money that I'm spending mm -hmm. here, I can use that mm -hmm. to open a business, yeah. the same type of business yeah. here in Ghana. And okay. that, that came with sense. the birth here. But the biggest mistake is I did not understand the industry. Mm. There's a lot to the industry that I needed to learn mm. before I opened it. Right. The okay. mindset was good, but I just didn't know how to go about that industry. Right. So right. there's been a lot of ups and downs mm. here, with, especially with the bar. The with bar the has bar been the, 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 the biggest challenge mm. for me so far. The bar has been the biggest challenge wow. for me so okay. Yeah. How long ago did you set this up? How long ago did you set the, the beauty studio and the restaurant and everything? 
So the salon, the barbershop opened November 2021. So it's been, what, about a year and maybe four months. Mm. The bar opened exactly a year Monday was exactly a year. Oh, okay. So around, okay. I think we did a soft opening in February, okay. but we actually opened in March. So it's okay. been exactly about a year now. A year, okay. For the okay. bar, because there was a lot that had to go into it, a lot of uh, licenses that had to right. we had to get before we could be able to open. Oh, okay. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, generally speaking, in Ghana, like every corner you would find a bar, like there's always some random bar by the roadside. That is true. You know, so you wouldn't think that it was, you know, you would need all that to open something like this. A lot of people don't have that. Right. A they lot of people, they it. just open. Okay. That's why right now, uh, GRA mm -hmm. is busting down on a lot of people. Oh, right, right. Because if you don't get these licenses, you don't, you're not really recognized. Right. From me, coming from an American space mm. and running businesses in America, America, mm -hmm. I wanted to do everything by the book. Yeah. I wanted to do everything right. Yeah. Because I know a lot of people don't do lawsuits in Ghana, but mm -hmm. I didn't want to get sued yeah, either way. Sure. So. With regards to the difficulty you've had since actually running it, can you tell me about that? Because it sounds like that's something you're still dealing with at the moment. S still dealing with it. <laughs> still dealing with it. It's a day to day affair where you go through a lot mm -hmm. and it's you have to have a strong mindset yeah. a strong mentality mm -hmm. and good backing yeah. as well people who, who you can call mm -hmm. at any time for advice yeah. and all that stuff so for my end right now the first thing that I had to do that saved me especially open the bar I didn't know I had to get a whole POS system right and then getting a whole and not a lot of bars mm, have that have POS, so yeah. having that whole uh, software POS system that keeps track of all your inventory mm. and all that stuff mm. that's very expensive as well mm. in the long run I seen it saved me okay. a lot mm. uh, that that POS system alone cost me about four thousand dollars Oh, yes. did you get that in Ghana? Or got that in Ghana. Oh, okay. So right now, everything is in Ghana. Yeah. Everything you're looking for, it's in Ghana. Mm. Uh, back then, everything we used to bring from America, mm. but now it's all here. Right. And it's more expensive bringing it because when you get it here, you still have to pay fees mm. and all that stuff. Right. And then you realize that you're losing a lot of money. Mm. You could have just purchased it here. Right, okay. Yeah, so yeah. if you do the math, it's, it it's more stress yeah. relieving if you just get it yeah. right here. Okay. So I got everything here. We got it set up. And on the day-to-day -day running of a bar, the most difficult thing that you deal with when you have a bar is stealing. Oh. Because it's so easy, easy. for people to just take and take and take and take. So why are they taking? The drinks or the money? The drinks, the money. Everything. Everything. Oh, everything. Okay. If you don't have a good structure, uh, everything will be everything. We've been only open for a year. Mm -hmm. And already we've lost about 24,000 Ghana cities. Oh just from stealing right just from stealing so wow. and this is just workers that are not this is just workers right, okay. workers and bad management okay workers yeah. bad management so when i opened it i i believe in more of a i don't micromanage mm. because i feel like mm -hmm. you know you're grown mm -hmm. you know what you're doing and you should be able mm -hmm. to do it but in ghana it doesn't work it doesn't work <laughs> you have, to, you have micromanage to micromanage that's true because i i my two managers that i have that take take care of the business in America, yeah. I don't micromanage them. Right. And I brought the same mindset here, mm. and it doesn't work like no, that. You have to be present every time. You have to ask questions. You have to be in everybody's business. Mm. Because funny enough, uh, you can have drinks in your fridge, mm -hmm. or you can have a whole stock of drinks, mm -hmm. and workers will bring their own drinks to work and oh. sell their drinks to customers whilst your drinks remain in, in your face. space oh my god <laughs> exactly so you would you would you know you have an event yeah. where you'll be like oh you see a lot of people buying uh hennessy's mm. and the away and all that kind of stuff when you walk through you look at the table you're like okay it's yeah, gonna be a good day yeah, yeah, yeah. but then you take inventory and you still have the same amount of drinks yeah, that you began the night yeah. with and so oh you, you actually said where did all these drinks yeah go where where do these people get the mm, drinks from mm. and that's the type of things that you have to struggle with when yeah. it comes to the bar side yeah, right, okay. the restaurant side is the same mm. when you get all your inventory when you go to the market buy all your stocks and everything workers can steal a bag of rice mm. if you're not on it and making sure you're always on it you can have workers mm. steal a bag of rice so, right, so that's why yeah. i say you have to have a strong mentality yeah and if you want to do it you're gonna you, do it i'm not is it still a viable business is it still something you encourage people to get into 
a bar and restaurant, is it? If, if it's something you want to do, you can you do can it. You can do it. There, okay. is, there is money in it, okay. but you just have to be hands on. Yeah, okay. There is because there's a lot of restaurants in Accra, yeah. in Tema, yeah. here in Ghana, that mm. makes a lot of money. Yeah, okay. And they've been running for years. Sure. But it's just you having the right mentality yeah. and making sure you have good management. Mm. If you're not going to move down here, mm -hmm. And you just want to open a bar here and be in America mm -hmm. or be in Canada or be wherever, don't do it. <laughs> I would just tell you. I, I think that I goes for it. any business. Yes. So you can't really run a business yes. here if you're not here. Yes. So. Yeah. Well, so has moving to Ghana been worth it for you? Has it been what you expected? I would say yes. Yes. For me, for my mental health, okay. it has. Okay. Because I was, I was very stressed in America. America can be very stressful. A whole lot of stuff can be very stressful, mm. especially running a, a trucking business mm. in America can be very, very stressful. Everything could go very well one week, mm. and the next week you could have four or five accidents, and that's a nightmare. Mm. If you want to hang out with friends, everybody is busy working. Mm. The social life is not it's the same limited, as yeah. in Ghana. So for my mental health, it's like I'm on a vacation every day, mm. right now in Ghana. Yeah. All I do is I wake up, mm -hmm. work, mm -hmm check on the business, mm -hmm. make sure I'm hands-on on all the businesses. Mm -hmm. I'm checking sales, I'm making sure I'm checking on the mining, I'm mm -hmm. checking on everything else that I can check on. Yeah. And my day just goes like that. Yeah, right. And there's no, there's stress, mm -hmm. but there's not a lot of stress compared to America's America, stress. Yeah. You know, These are some of the challenges that mm -hmm. moving to Ghana mm -hmm. can be, but it's just, it's, you, you get your peace of mind. That's true. It's, it's very relaxing and leaving. Yeah. And you can just go on a vacation and it will not be expensive as in America. Yeah, you know, that's true. You can take a trip to, I've seen some of your videos where you take trips and you take a trip and it'll cost you anywhere from $500 yeah. for the whole trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I take a trip in America, I know I'm down like two k, three thousand yeah, yeah, yeah. dollars at least. Yeah. So Ghana's getting expensive though. It, so it depends it is, on where you're going. It depends, depends on where you're going. going. It depends on where you're going. It depends. That's true. Yeah. At least you have the option. Right? Yes, you have yeah, the option. Yeah. So how did you find the space to um, establish this business? Because I mean, Tema is not really a place where you can find land, or even I think it's it's quite expensive. If you find a place to rent even so. Yeah. Uh, finding a space in Ghana, it's, it's a little difficult. Mm. So uh, again, back in 2018 when I was doing my research mm. on what, what I wanted to start, mm -hmm. I had uh, to look around, okay. have some guys go around for me. Mm -hmm. So I was still in the US, mm -hmm. so we were going around looking for spaces. We found a lot of spaces, mm. but I really didn't like how it looked. Right. And I think in 2020, mm -hmm. I had a cousin of mine just go around. So I was just there and he sent me a video of a, a location and it's just this nice location that had this parking lot, mm. huge parking lot. And the idea just came to me okay. that, you know, I could use this for a bar. Mm. I could use this for a salon. I could have everything in one spot mm -hmm. and just have an office somewhere else. Cause right. I didn't want to have the office the same place where I have all the businesses. Right. So that's where I came about the space. Mm. And uh, it was just perfect. Mm. Now it wasn't cheap. Mm. Rent, like you said, a lot of things are getting expensive mm. here in Ghana. So rent was, well, Per American standard is cheap, but per Ghana standards, mm. it's a little expensive. Mm. I think I got it for about a thousand Ghana cities for a month, for a month and yeah. you have to pay the whole two years, so mm. that's twenty-four thousand. Yeah. And she had about four different spaces, mm. so I needed three, but I also needed one for a storage room. Right. So I got four of them. Oh, so four thousand. So that's four thousand a month, mm. and then you have to pay all two years up front. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I had to cough up a huge bill mm. to make sure I get that, mm. and then and. <laughs> Funny enough, well, it's not funny because everything is going up. Now the rent is going up. Sometimes you're not even going to make enough money to cover to the rent. cover the rent, But yeah. you have to, you know, it's it's time. It's mm -hmm. just like every business. Mm. You can't expect to blow it up. Straight away. Straight away yeah. in, a, in a year or in two years. Yeah, yeah. So those are some of the things you have to cough up. Yeah. To make sure that you can keep the business going. Because mm. when we started, especially the hair salon, when we mm -hmm. started, it was not as good. Mm. We were barely even making a thousand Ghana cities wow, a month. Okay. And the rent is a thousand Ghana mm. cities. So it took time before now where we had a good space where now we can cover rent okay, good. and then be able to do other stuff too. Okay. So I believe with time, yeah, business we'll pick will pick up. up. Yeah. So I always advise that if you're moving to Ghana and you want to start a business, mm. don't bank your whole hopes of making money from the business immediately. Mm, mm, mm. Just make sure you're running the business right. Mm. If you need some source of income to where you can feed on or live on, 
make sure you have like an investment that yields you some type of mm. interest mm -hmm. that you can use that interest mm. to take care of yourself right. while you run the business. Yeah. And with the buying the restaurant, has it been busy? Like, have you? It has been very busy. When we started, mm. we were doing very well. Okay. But we had bad management. We're doing uh, very well, but we we're a lot of things were getting stolen. Uh, okay. Now. Uh, it's doing okay since inflation started because mm. we're doing very well till everything went up. Mm -hmm. And now a lot of people don't have a lot of excess money for chilling mm. per se yeah, or yeah, yeah. Having, having fun or fun. partying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, you know. So that's where the struggle is, but it's still doing very well. Yeah. Still okay. doing very well. The bar makes pretty decent amount, okay. but after you take out expenses mm. and everything, mm. you can rent and everything, and it's, it's pretty decent. Okay, it's, it's so pretty. who are you in Ghana with? Like, are you with family? Are you on your own? Like you know, I've been alone in my whole life. So, uh, I mean, my family's here. My mom is here, okay. uh, dad's here. Uh, but for now, I'm here by myself. By yourself, okay. I go and then I come back right. sometimes. So like when, every time when I'm missing America or I need to, stock up on my lotions mm -hmm. and my bath and body works. I, oh, <laughs> you still use those? I still use oh them. I can't, I can't go. Oh my God, you've got butter and stuff around. What are you I, doing? I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't let that go. I still need to go back in. Okay. Well, can you show us around your space? Yes, definitely. Yeah? Definitely. I can definitely okay, do cool. that. So this is, this is the bar area. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the little seated areas where people sit. Yeah. Uh, we have a pool table mm -hmm. here, and uh, a lot of people come here play pool. Yeah. And have fun. It's, we have like a little cabana space, like a little shed space where mm -hmm. it's privacy and everything. Right. You can sit there. Uh, we have the seated area, outside seated area. It's really hot right now, so people won't sit here. Yeah. But at night, a lot of people love mm. this space. And then that's inside of the bar. Oh, we're just okay. opening, so now we are doing all the They're opening setting meetings. It up. Yeah, okay, setting everything cool. up. Okay. That's the space in there as well. Mm -hmm. The hair salon is upstairs, mm -hmm. and I'll take I'll take you upstairs so you, you see it. So it's, okay. I pretty much got everything all in one space. One space. Where yeah. I don't have to drive here to check on this and yeah. drive here to check on that. Yeah. And all, all, all of that stuff. And also, it's good for me because uh, I pretty much grew up here in this. In this area. In this area. Oh, okay. Community too. Okay. So it was like more like coming home oh, and nice. setting up something at home. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people know me already. Right. So it was more like a proud moment for me. Mm. It's like, you know, I made it. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so this is the hair salon. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you basically run it and then you employ people to do hair and stuff. Is that, is that how it works? Yeah. So yeah. These are uh, the ladies that do the hair. Oh, okay. So they do all the hair. Awesome ladies. Okay. So uh, pedicure, we do pedicure, nails, mm. makeup. Okay. And then a set of hairstylists as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Is the hairstyle part of the uniform or because it's matching? <laughs> I don't even know how, don't know how that happened. I don't know how that happened. I don't, I don't know how that happened. I think so. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's a hair it's salon. It's pretty. It's very well yeah. set up. Yeah. Yes, I, I try to give it a little standard. Yeah. Where it looks, it doesn't look like the regular yeah, no, uh, hair salon really, here yeah, in Ghana. So really give it a little... East Lego on classic style. Good, but here good. in Tillman, so yeah. it's no bad. This is it. Lovely. So they've been pretty well. So what, what are your prices? Like if I did maybe not less braids, like not too small, not too big, medium size. Starting from high. Okay, so that's reasonable. Okay. So it's pretty decent. The prices yeah. are not really It's not too expensive. It's not too expensive. Yeah, no. We go around and make sure that we are still we still have the same price yeah. as everybody else. Yeah. Even though it looks fancy, yeah. the price is still it's regular. Still, yeah. It's still like regular. Okay. And washing, uh, what, how much is washing? Like 20, 20 CDs for washing. 20. Okay. Other places charge 30 CDs. Yeah, I know place right. right down the street that charges 30 You get your hair washed. <laughs> So, <laughs> so we still try to make sure we can cater for everybody. So yeah. Not okay. just the uh, high end people. Yeah, as well. so, that's good. So, I'll yeah. come sometime. You definitely should. Yeah, you should. I will. And they're, they're pretty good as well. Yeah, very good. okay. Very, very good. So I had to take this extra space mm -hmm. for a storage room. Oh, this is your storage room. Yeah, so I think oh. I have one of the most expensive storage rooms because this is also a thousand <laughs> I Ghana cities. Thousand cities. <laughs> I know. This is also a thousand cities just for a storage room. Oh gosh. And yeah. Does it get as busy as the salon? Or? The barbershop gets way, 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 way oh, busier than okay. the salon. You must have some good barbers then. Very good barbers. Okay. If not the best in Tema. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is the barbershop. Okay. Try to give it a U.S. standard yeah. barbershop where you have all this set up. The and mirrors and, the yeah. mirrors and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, so these are all things you bought here? All things I got oh. here. 
I got all this here. Yeah, cool. All this here. And then I had a budget, mm -hmm. and it was right in the budget. Yeah, okay. Everything fit right in the budget of how much I wanted to spend. That's amazing. I didn't even go above or anything. Yeah. So it was pretty good. Yeah. Pretty, pretty good. That's good. Very and what do you charge for a haircut? It used to be 20 but now it's 30 fees based okay. on the price of things going up. Okay. And uh, we went with how much people charge around. Around here, yeah, yeah. And so most barbershops around charge anywhere from 25 mm -hmm. to 35 Ghana right. cities. So we just charge 30, uh, 30 Ghana cities. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. You know, you have to have the registrations taken up. Most mm. barbershops don't have that registration. And all oh, that stuff. So yeah. we make sure we have all the registration. Mm -hmm. the all right, so I'm about to try some food from Joshua's restaurant. Um, I've got Eba and Okuru soup. What's you? Okay, so the bar and restaurant is called JB's. It's on Google, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's on Google. If you search for it, you find it. So let me try it and let you know what I think. Mmm. It tastes homemade. It's, it's really, really good. good. Yeah. That's my favorite here. It's really good. I've got cow meat, fish, and it's all like 25 CDs and stuff. Like yeah. it's really, really cheap. Yep. You could eat lunch every every day every here day and here. not even spend that much money. Thank you so much for taking us around your place. I think you're doing really well. This is really inspiring for people that are considering moving from the diaspora to Ghana as well. So I'm glad you shared your story with us. Thank you. Thank you for coming. That's Thank all right. You. So if people want to contact you, how can they do that? My email will be on the, the screen. It will okay. be right on the screen. And then my phone number will also be there. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Make sure you give me a thumbs up if you want to see more content like this. Subscribe if you haven't already. All of um, Joshua's information will be on the screen as well as in the description box below. Don't forget to follow your bliss soul. Now, life is short. Follow your bliss. Now, you pay a day. Follow your bliss. Now, you this CBI and follow your bliss. Now, then, my Take care, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.